All right. Hello, everyone. This is the CircuitPython Weekly for Monday, March 11th, 2024. This is the time of the week when we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. I'm Dan, and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. You might ask, what is CircuitPython? It's a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. U.S. Pacific Time, except when it coincides with the U.S. holiday. In the notes doc, there's a link to a calendar you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you would like to receive these notifications, ask us to add you to the at sign CircuitPythonistas Discord role. So I'll mention that there's a notes document that accompanies the meeting and recording. Right now, this is the Google Docs uh, shared doc. You can contribute to this uh, document beforehand. The final notes document includes timestamps to go along with the video that's recorded, so you can use the doc to skip around and view the parts of the video that interest you most. The meeting tends to run 30 to 60 minutes. After each meeting, we post a link for the next meeting's notes document to the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord. Check the pinned messages to find the latest notes doc so you can add your notes for the following meeting. If you wish to participate but can't attend, feel free to leave hug reports and status updates in the document for us to read during the meeting. This meeting is held in five parts. I'll discuss each part as we get to them. So uh, right now, I will start with community news, and I'll take a timestamp. Um, and I'll remind you that these uh, news items come from the, the Python and Microcontrollers newsletter, which is published every Monday, um, edited by uh, Anne, who's in the um, discussion right now, who's in the, the chat right now. And um, I'll talk to more, you more about the newsletters after I read the item. So the first top item is that CircuitPython 900 release candidate zero is now out. Uh, this release is believed to be stable and is meant for testing before the final release of 900. You can see the blog post about the release in uh, the Adafruit blog. You can also look at the release notes on GitHub. And there's also, um, it's been uh, pasted uh, into uh, the CircuitPython dev and help with CircuitPython channels also as of last Thursday evening. Uh, we know of some bugs in 9.0.0, release candidate zero, and we'll talk about that later. Um, next item is uh, a Back to the Future uh, style time circuits display, which is uh, showing up in the um, chat. Thank you very much. Um, this was done uh, by somebody with CircuitPython and has dial and time settings now. And you can read, there are links in the notes document um, and in Reddit and on Tom's hardware about this. Looks really nice. Uh, next item is a new book called Build Your Own Rob Robot Using Python, Cricket, and Raspberry Pi. Um, this is a book uh, published by Manning by Marwan Alsababa, and it's coming out March 12th. That's tomorrow. There are links in the notes document. Uh, the um, link on the publisher's website is especially helpful. It shows a lot of uh, what you can see inside the book. Um, Cricket, if you don't know, is Adafruit's... Um, there are several boards called Cricket that uh, let you control motors and things like that easily, motors and servos, etc., easily from CircuitPython or Arduino or whatever, and in a variety of form factors. So this looks really nice. And now I'll mention that these uh, 
things come from the Python or Microcontroller's newsletter, which is run a CircuitPython community-run newsletter emailed every Monday. The complete archives are at adafruitdaily.com. Uh, this newsletter highlights the latest Python and hardware-related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. You can contribute uh, news to the newsletter by submitting a PR, a pull request to next week's draft, which is on GitHub, or you can email cpnews at adafruit.com, or you can tag a post with hashtag CircuitPython and Mastodon, Blue Sky, or... Um, X, formerly known as Twitter. So we appreciate you uh, sending in uh, things to talk about. It could be your own things or other things that you found interesting. All right. The next section, uh, the next major section, is the state of circuit Python, Blinka's, the libraries, and Blinka. This is a quantitative overview of the entire CircuitPython project. It gives us a chance to look at the health of the project separate from our status updates. We'll talk about the project overall and then separately discuss the core libraries and Blinka. So in the past week, um, as of like around midnight last night, uh, 29 pull requests had emerged in the past week by 21 authors. And there's some authors I haven't seen here before, um, Leyland Synth, um, Jin's T. Komoda, um, Anonymous Cowhead, and Sean Chain W. Uh, maybe they've contributed before, but I'm just not familiar. And there were six reviewers of those 29 pull requests, and there were 37 closed issues by nine people and 12 opened by 10 people. And now we'll go on. Um, to the report about the CircuitPython core. And Scott, are you available to read that? Yeah, okay. I'm here. OK, so for the core, we had 18 pull requests merged from 12 different authors. So thank you to all of those authors. Uh, we had some new folks as well. Um, Jin's Takamoda. James Denau are relatively new. Uh, Goots is relatively new. And uh, just to highlight, Lady Ada had a PR as well. Uh, we had three reviewers, uh, Melissa, Dan, and I, so thanks to us. Uh, we have 24 open pull requests at the time that these were taken, uh, which is right up on that limit of a single page. Uh, we had 29 closed issues by five people and six opened by five people, so a lot closed, uh, I think, thanks to Dan. We have a total of 656 open issues, um, and we use milestones to track the prioritization for Adafruit-funded work. Um, we've got two open issues for 9.0. That is our main uh, milestone right now. We're trying to get 9.0 stable. We're really close. Uh, we have uh, three open issues for 9.0x, which is the um, kind of the next milestone for us, which is like once it's stable, these things are worth fixing as well. Um, that's also a new milestone this week. Uh, we have two open issues for net 10.0, which are things we want to remember for 10. And uh, 8.2x, which is our current stable release, has no open issues, so it's looking good there. Um, we have, yeah, so that's generally it. And we have one issue not assigned to milestone, so we'll just need to double check that we've triaged everything. And that's it for the core. All right, thank you, Scott. Yes, I had I went through especially the support issues. There were a bunch of stale issues there, and I closed a bunch of them. All right. Uh, next up is the library section, which will be um, read by Foamy Guy. All right, thanks, Dan. Uh, this section does cover all of the CircuitPython libraries, um, which you can find all on GitHub under names like Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, and then the name of whatever library it is. Um, those are the official Adafruit ones, I should mention. I guess a couple of our stats later on are the community bundle, which of course would have different names. But um, of these libraries, they are Python level code. Typically, these are going to help you either interact with a specific piece of hardware, like a driver library, or they are a higher level sort of project helper library, such as uh, portal based, PyPortal, uh, the Clue library, things like that, that allow you to interact with. Um, various bits of the hardware without having to worry about as many of the minute details. 
across all those libraries this week, we had eight pull requests merged uh, by eight authors. Um, the names on here that uh, stuck out to me as newer or uh, less frequent contributors were uh, Leland Sint, and then uh, I will say KB Sriram as well. I believe uh, I've seen that one before, but maybe not as frequently over on the library side, so thanks to them. And Leland Sint as well, uh, either newer or less frequent contributors. Um, thanks to the rest of the folks as well who are more typical contributors. Um, for those eight pull requests, we had five reviewers. So thanks to our reviewers, mostly typical folks, uh, Dan, uh, myself, uh, let's see, Dan, myself, Scott, Tectric, and Liz. Uh, thanks to those folks for library reviews this week. Um, of the merged pull requests this week, uh, most of them were on the newer side. The oldest one was just about two weeks old at 15 days, and the rest were, uh, you know, just uh, six days or less, a couple of them being only one day old, just like usual. That leaves us with 55 open pull requests. The oldest uh, draft one of those is 571 days. The newest one is just one day. Um, over the past seven days, there were six issues closed by five people, uh, with six new issues opened up by five people, so uh, staying net equal there on issues. That leaves us with 740 open issues across all these libraries, and of those, there are 19 of them that are labeled as good first issues, uh, which you can find over on circuitpython.org slash contributing, which is where you should head if you are interested in contributing to CircuitPython on the Python side of things. Um, you'll find a list of open PRs as well as open issues. If you're looking to contribute, that's a great place to start. Uh, if you want to get started with reviewing uh, first, you can check out the list of open PRs, take a look at the code. If you've got hardware, test it out. Otherwise, just look at the syntax, spelling, uh, comments, things like that. Leave a comment on the GitHub PR. Let us know that you looked at it. And once you found, uh, once you get comfortable with that, we can level you up to leave uh, official reviews over on GitHub. Um, if you are interested in actually getting your hands dirty with coding, you can take a look through the open issues. Um, you can sort by labels on the open issues, including that good first issue label. Um, on those issues, you can take a look through the list, find something that you've got hardware for, and uh, you know attempt to you know add whatever feature it is or fix whatever bug it is that the issue uh, notes. Um, we know that this process can be daunting to folks that are new, so we've got guides for contributing with Git and GitHub, and uh, those are over on the Learn system. We've also got folks on the Discord who are around all the time who are willing to help you if you are trying to get started and need help. So uh, let us know over on the Discord if you are having trouble. Uh, take a look through the guides. We want to make sure that everyone can contribute, uh, no matter what level of skill that you've got. So we're happy to help out. Um, in library uh, PyPI stats for the week, we had 117,506 PyPy downloads across the 325 uh, total libraries. The top tens list is here in the notes doc if you'd like to take a look through those. And then for updated libraries this week, it looks like uh, OAuth 2 and Template Engine are the uh, two listed here. Um, and that's what we have this week in library land. Thanks. All right, thank you, Tim. OK, <clears throat> next up is uh, Blinka. And I'll be read by Melissa. Hello. So Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for MicroPython, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. And this week we had pull, three pull requests merged by two authors and one reviewer. That leaves a uh, leaves six open pull requests amongst all the repositories. There were two closed issues by one person and zero open by zero people, leaving a net of 83 open issues. There were 12,496 PyPI downloads in the last week, 11,775 PyWheels downloads in the last month, and we are 129 boards. And that is it. All right, thank you very much. All right, uh, next major section is Hug Reports. I'll take a timestamp. Um, Hug Reports is a chance to highlight folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. I'll start and then we'll go down the list alphabetically to give everyone a chance to participate. If you are text only or missing the meeting, I'll read your notes when I get them to them in the list. So as I said, I'll start here, take another timestamp. Um, thanks to Salam Citron and Retired Wizard who found issues with uh, 
the 9 0 release candidate 0, and we're, one of them has been fixed, and we're working on the other one. And thanks to Just Mobilize and Bablock B, who have been working on Adafruit requests and thinking about ideas about how to improve some aspects of it right now. Um, next up is C. Grover. Um, I'll read theirs. Uh, thanks to Rob Cranfill on GitHub for catching a documentation error in the Wave Builder and Wave Storage repos and a group hug. And next up is uh, DJ Devon. Uh, thank you. Uh, this week, I have hug reports for Anic Data for helping troubleshoot an Adafruit requests out of retries error handling issues that I failed to account for. Uh, catching the error and reloading provides a new pool of retries until an inevitable successful connection uh, can be made. So thank you for looking into that issue. And that just means that uh, any script that you have that runs 24-7 online with an API, even if it fails, no matter how it fails, it'll just reload. Um, <clears throat> a hug report to Jerry N, Argon Blue, Bear, LP Kennen, and help with CircuitPython Discord for their help with parts of Adafruit ATEC crypto module and general Python syntax help. A lot of learn from their collective help. And a hug to Foamy Guy for a series of streams on the M5 stack card pewter this weekend. It was highly informative on how to port a new device that has a built in keyboard. And that's it. Thank you. All right, thank you. And uh, next up, we have uh, Tim, or Foamy Guy. All right, thanks, Dan. Uh, hug reports for me this week. Thanks to Retired Wizard uh, for running with the start that I made on the M5 card pewter uh, key scanning library, making some improvements to that, as well as sharing a project that has successfully hooked it up to uh, the REPL, which is really cool. Uh, thanks to C. Darius on GitHub for submitting a PR to add support in the core for the uh, demuxed row pin wiring that the card pewter has on its keyboard, uh, although I don't know if that's the right term. Um, thank you to uh, Michael uh, Mikal Pokusa for entertaining lots of my sort of off the top of my head, it would be cool if style ideas for the template engine and the HTTP server library. Uh, most recently with some very fancy error messaging for the template engine that makes it really easy to figure out where any syntax errors in your template are. Uh, but there have been a handful of other things that I have kind of wished for and have come true uh, thanks to them. So thank you for that. Um, thanks to Tyeth uh, for working last week on the Circup uh, web workflow support branch. And uh, finally, thanks to Argon Blue on Discord for reporting an issue over the weekend uh, for Discord moderation. Appreciate it. Thanks. All right, thank you. And next up is um, Jeff. Hello, uh, I have a group hug. And uh, to be more specific about that, um, I looked up the number of people who have authored commits uh, from the 8.2.x branch up to 9.0.0 RC0, and that includes contributors to MicroPython. There's a list of 351 author names. Some of those are spelling differences, some of those are bots, but that still means there's like over 200 people and probably over 300 people who have contributed to this moment that we've gotten to of uh, CircuitPython 9. And that's really exciting. And I just, I, I'm thankful to every one of them that they helped us out. All right. Thank you, Jeff. That's a, those are very interesting numbers. And next up we have Jerry. Uh, group hug to everybody. Nice to be here. Thank you, Jerry. And next up is Justin. Yeah, also just a group hug. I've really just been enjoying working with all the people here. It's a great uh, community. All right, thank you. And now uh, we've got maker Melissa. I wanted to give a hug to everybody who's added boards to circuitpython.org. Uh, also, everyone involved in getting the release candidate of CircuitPython out. And to Jeff for the quick fix for the web workflow on SD cards. And a group hug to everyone else. All right, thank you. And uh, next, I'll read Retired Wizard's uh, contribution. Thanks to Foamy Guy for the card pewter key scanning library he wrote on Saturday's live stream. It's just stream, not scream, <laughs> and a group hug. And finally, uh, Scott will round us out. Thanks, Dan. Uh, first, I have a hug to Austin. A Appleby on GitHub, also Tangent on Discord, which is 
very similar to my name, which is funny. Um, for the Honcho build system, I saw this on Hacker News. It looks really interesting. It's meant to be a super simple build system that leverages uh, Python's async IO system to do building stuff. So I've been playing around with that. Um, hugs to Dan H for making the release candidate release. Um, hugs to KB Sriram for doing bit buying IO fixes and including tests. And the tests include like a simulation. Um, so you can actually like use pulse view to see uh, what your code's been doing, which is very cool. Uh, hug to Liz for continued CircuitPython testing. She's found lots of really uh, critical issues. And then everyone else who also has tested 9.0, it's it's great to be this like super close to the end. Um, and uh, we wouldn't be here without folks finding all the problems. So thank you all. All right, thank you, Scott. Uh, next up, our major section is status updates. Um, this is our time to tell folks what we're up to individually. I'll start and we'll go through the list alphabetically as usual. Um, you can take a couple of minutes to talk about what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you'll be doing until the next meeting. You could also talk about any tips and tricks that are relevant when people are working on. And if something turns into a discussion, we can always bring it to the, to the in the weeds section if we want a more extended discussion. All right, so uh, as I said, I'll start. Um, I released CircuitPython 900 release candidate zero last Thursday night. Um, there have been a couple of bugs. Um, there will be an RC1 uh, when we fix the current set of showstoppers, and we're going to update the frozen libraries again because they're constantly being updated all the time. Um, I fixed a race condition in uh, BLE scan entry processing, which was there for a long time and caused rather odd problems and sometimes storage problems. It definitely affected the NRF port and maybe also some other ports, but it was kind of a general problem. And I've been doing just a lot of reviewing and bug triage over the past week, uh, getting ready for uh, the release candidate and then following up on things. And I also closed uh, a bunch of issues, especially support issues, as that I've mentioned that uh, got stale or w were taken care of or we had no feedback on. All right, uh, next up, I'll read C. Grover's contribution. Um, Electronics and coding projects were placed temporarily on hold when the home remodeling project commenced. Getting to solve some hands-on problems such as, quote, is that eyebrow window outline a fractional tip of an ellipse or a radius arch, close quote, and how is the radius of a circle's arc determined if you only know the width and height of the eyebrow? Thank goodness it wasn't elliptical. Um, and then expecting to return to the Wave Story, Wave Story Library and the CG35 calculator projects next weekend. And next up is DJ Devon 3. Uh, thank you. Yes, I've also noticed that there's a lot of woodworking projects uh, being posted in the CircuitPython Discord or in just in, in the Adafruit Discord lately. Uh, this week I finished the ST7796 display project that I was working on and includes a custom featherwing adapter, PCBs, and a 3D printed enclosure. And it took about two months to complete. There's a picture of that. Submitted a minor quirky PR for a code comment error in Adafruit HT 16K33 repo simple test. The seven segment library a long time ago used integers from 0 to 15 for segment brightness and a code comment reflected that. It was changed to float values shortly thereafter, but the code comment never reflected that change. So it went uncorrected for four years, I'm tackling the tough issues in CircuitPython, and that is, of course, sarcasm, because the, the, the update, the PR was just literally two characters <laughs> that I submitted. Uh, but it just goes to show that anyone can contribute if you spot an issue and submit a PR and fix for it. Uh, Discord user Bear02 found an issue with the Adafruit ATEC crypto module. The simple test completely fails in 8.2.10, uh, and I've been helping them work through the issue and got the simple test to work again until it started failing again, so there's definitely an issue there. I uh, had to lower the I2C frequency, the bus frequency, from 100,000 to 75,000, and it magically started working. I have no idea what prompted that required change in frequency, uh, the wake frequency is like a ping, and without the correct ping, the ITC module will never wake up to even function. 
but then after 128 uses, it locks itself again. That's that's what I found out after iterating 128 times. Um, so the data sheet mentions that there is a release function to dinit, but there is not one in the library. So the module stays locked permanently after the first 128 times that you use it. Or if you attempt to generate a CSR signing sheet, which is also included as a simple test, uh, it will lock itself. And I will submit an issue on this soon. That's it. All right. Thank you. Yes, th these, these ATEC modules are not easy to use. And I uh, appreciate you working on that. Um, next up is um, Tim, Foamy Guy. All right. Uh, last week, I finished up some of the remaining changes based on feedback uh, for web workflow support in Circa uh, PR, uh, along with a couple of uh, extra fixes that were just due to changes in the web workflow API that were made in the core since that uh, PR was originally started. Um, after that got done and uh, put in, I started looking into adding support into Circuit for 8.x devices. Uh, since the Web Workflow API did change, it would need some uh, some adjusting in order to support. But uh, I think where we landed is I'm going to give up on that one for now because there's actually a separate issue uh, affecting those devices, different from just the API changing, but uh, still problematic and allowing it not to work. So uh, I'll set that down. But the other thing that I uh, had my eye on inside of Circup when I was working on it is um, kind of starting to brainstorm and think about how I would refactor the main sort of monolithic giant code file that it's got uh, into some smaller, more manageable sized chunks, which would be nice. The, uh, the addition of web workflow uh, started us down that road by adding the backends, um, but there's definitely still some improvement that can be made. So um, I'll probably uh, jump on that here pretty soon. Um, the other stuff that I got into over the past week, I mocked out uh, some potential behavior for the keypad module with a, uh, a class that I called multiplexer matrix. Um, this allows you to read from a key matrix that has row pins that are mapped to a three to eight shift register, as opposed to uh, the other kind of shift register, whose name I forgot. Um, I built out a helper library that, that kind of went on top of that sort of mocked out keypad uh, reader thing to actually map to the letters and functionalities that are on the actual keyboard uh, on the card pewter, which is what I was working on, um, and got it set up to where you could actually uh, type onto the screen. It will uh, add add letters and digits to a label as you type them, uh, which is pretty cool. And then um, I, since then, have also gone a little bit farther uh, on uh, not quite the same project, but a project that's still continuing to build on top of uh, each of the previous ones, which is uh, a, a messenger, uh, kind of like a, a, a um, social messenger type web uh, server application that runs on the card computer. It allows you to send messages between the person who's holding the device, they would just type on the keyboard, uh, and another person who loads up the page, uh, a web app page in a browser from a device that's on the same network. Um, so you could kind of chat back and forth between those two users. Uh, and then uh, lastly, as a uh, reminder mostly to myself, uh, I'll be filling in on Deep Dive uh, this week on Friday as well. So stop by on Friday afternoon if you want to check it out. Thanks. All right, thank you, Tim. All right, uh, we have Jeff up next. Hello, I'm a little uh, distracted by the card pewter rebel code, which I want to see how that is working. But um, over the last week, I did a couple of small fixes for uh, the version 9 before the release candidate went out. But mostly, I spent the week in Arduino land, enhancing support for uh, the Adafruit Flopsy upcoming product and just uh, interacting with, with floppies generally. Um, so one of the demos is uh, to present a floppy to the computer as USB mass storage. And I've been adding features to that, such as the ability to swap disks out um, and the ability to detect whether the disk is right protected and to figure out whether, in this case of a three and a half inch drive, whether it's a 1.4 meg or a 720K uh, floppy. So that's uh, coming along pretty well. There are a few items left to do. And once that is done and merged, I will look, on, look at updating the floppy IO, floppy IO module in CircuitPython, which is built on the same core C code. And uh, to kind of prove that out, I will make a demo or example program 
in CircuitPython that will read the contents of an MFM floppy from the floppy drive onto an image file on the SD card slot that's built into the Flopsy. Um, and in personal news, I've been singing in a local community choir since last fall. I've, uh, I was in a concert a week ago and another one next Friday. It is really a lot of fun uh, to be doing that. So just wanted to share that with y'all. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Jeff. Okay. And next up, we've got Jerry. Oh, oh, I got to hit the button mute once. Okay. Um, so I've just been spending a lot more time working on this, combining the RFM 6.9 and 9x libraries. Um, I think I reported last week, I finally got FSK working on the 9x, So and, and also stumbled across that that also makes OOK work, the on-off keying. Um, so they both work. So the RFM 9x's can happily talk to the 6.9s if you want them to. And... Um, so now I've, I've really been thinking about the best way to structure all this. Now that I've got the, basically the existing libraries working as a combined library, um, but um, you know I, I had been concentrating on making so I didn't break any of the current API settings and he, you know, made it so that existing code would run with just a just changing the la library name. Um, but now I'm really thinking whether it's worth preserving that or going ahead and you know, making some real changes to make things a lot simpler um, and to make it more consistent for naming of things. So just, just thinking about all that. And, um, you know, one of the things I've been going through all the issues that are existing and trying to make sure they're all corrected in this in this new version. Um, the only one that stands out that's really, a, I think, a significant issue out there is there clearly were some problems in the way the RFM 9X was handling some of the non-default settings for this spread spreading factors and bandwidths. So I want to make sure those are fixed. And that may be the one thing that I probably want to backport in and put in the existing library as well, if I can straighten it out. Uh, time will tell. And uh, the, But then the main new thing, and Dan brought this up too, is that I really would like to try and see if we can get Async I.O. to work and help out with some of the timing issues on, on these libraries. So that's really the next big project part of this and probably what makes it all worth doing the whole Whole changeover. So, um, more on that uh, as situation warrants. I'll update if I can come up with anything. Otherwise, that's it. Thanks. All right. Thank you very much, Jerry. And we really appreciate what you're working on the library. Uh, yeah, next, all fun. next up is Justin. Yeah. So, I've been spending some time working through some of the um, older issues that are in the request library, um, kind of on a request networking kick. Um, I'm also looking at how different the socket pool.socket versus like the ESP32 uh, spy socket are to see if I can work on getting them a little bit um, more similar. Um, for ex example, um, when Adafruit NTP was updated to use uh, the socket pool, it stopped working um, for ESP32. So just trying to see if I can kind of get some of that stuff kind of uh, closer. Um, I also have a personal OAuth library that's a little bit more robust and current from the library that's out there right now. Um, it's The current one is all for uh, Google and supports more of the older auth methods that don't exist anymore. And so just trying to see if I can get that one into a better spot. All right. Thank you, Jesse. We really appreciate all the cleanup that you're, you're working on. Um, next up is Maker Melissa. Let's see, I have worked on uh, PyEyes, and uh, that's for the snake eye bonnet. I added code to resize the desktop contents on the fly and output to the display. So that's sort of working. Um, I tested an issue with slow spy, uh, which is only occurring on the Raspberry Pi 5 and um, in on with the PyEyes in C. And that is, uh, I, I submitted an issue to Raspberry Pi for that and found a bug where it only grabs the Wayland desktop uh, when it, it first starts and not after that. So I'm going to fix that soon. I also need to optimize some of the code so that we can get more frames per second. But at the moment, I'm working on finishing up uh, a web workflow guide for uh, the Memento. And that's where I'm at. All right, thank you, Melissa. And next up, we've got Scott. Hello. So 
I'm out this Friday because Ari has no daycare, so we're going out of town for a long weekend. Um, I've been doing some bug fixing. Uh, I fixed the ESP watchdog incorrect time, which I think Anic Data reported. I fixed the RGB matrix reliability stuff and updated the IDF to 513, um, which is, uh, I think Liz found as well. I fixed a TLSF issue where we couldn't allocate the same size after a free. Um, this is a bug in upstream TLSF, uh, and it was found due to breaking the DVI, basic DVI example. Um, I'm investigating the ESP32 boot loop issue. I just got it pulled up, <laughs> and it looks TLSF related, so we'll, we'll see. Um, and then a couple other things I'm going to do this week. Uh, if I'm not working on a high priority issue, is I'm going to get my Commodore 64 fixed slash at least tested. Thanks to Jeff Kaiser, who goes by Mighty Elm. And I'm also uh, working on the Honcho build system um, as a replacement for Make in CircuitPython because it looks really interesting and Python's way easier to debug and understand. So I'm going to see how far I can get with that in a couple days. OK, thanks, Scott. That sounds interesting, an interesting possibility. OK, and finally, um, I'll read Todd Bot's uh, contributions. Tried making a palette generator slash color summarizer for JPEGs to return a ranked list of dominant, dominant colors. And it works ish. It implements a simple color similarity detector to bin related colors. It takes about five seconds per image on an S3, that an ESP32 S3, I guess. And before that, a median slash mean image color uh, two uh, processor, which could be made much faster using some tricks from the above. Those both sound interesting, like maybe they could also be used for effects like posterizing or something like that. That's my comment. All right, so that's it for um, um, status reports. And we don't have anything for in the weeds uh, this week, unless somebody has anything to say. If not, uh, I'll do a wrap up. I'll take a timestamp. Um, so this has been the CircuitPython weekly meeting for Monday, March 11th, 2024. Thank you everyone who have participated. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, and those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. Uh, the meeting will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. The next meeting will be held next Monday as usual at 2 p.m. Eastern and 11 a.m. Pacific. I think that's right. Um, and uh, it's, it, the meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord. You can go there by go, join by going to adafru.it slash discord. If you want to be notified about the meeting and any changes to the its, its scheduling, you can ask to be added to the at sign circuit Pythonistas role on Discord. So we'll see you all next week. Thanks everyone for attending and I will stop recording now.